Okay, here's where it all comes together. Well, here's where a lot of it comes together. We're not going to use everything we just learned to make this little program here, but we are going to do a couple of things, and that's going to be learning functions and applying some of the variables and logic statements that we've learned already. Now, as you can see here, I've already put together a basic form. This is what it looks like over here. Um, I figured you don't need to see me type all of that. So what we have here is just a header saying, how many apples did you eat? And then a form that gives the user uh, a little text box to put in that number of apples. And then an input to submit their answer. Now, in order to get this to work, we need to add a little bit to the form. But we're going to do that after we write our logic testing function. OK, so first we need to determine what is the perfect number of apples you can eat. That is going to be, let's say, 12. Now, what this game is going to do is get the person to try to guess the number 12 by saying, oh, this is how many apples I ate. And, the, and then we're going to give the feedback of, well, you didn't eat enough apples or you ate too many apples. So to do that, we're going to need a function to perform this operation. And you declare a function, similarly to how you declare other stuff, by typing function, giving it a little bit of parentheses there, and some curly braces. So this probably looks pretty familiar. Now the function, however, doesn't have really too many standard things when you're declaring it. You just need to say, what is the name of it? And the name of it is going to be check apples. And then in parentheses, you can give it some sort of variable to pass through, or you can just let it do what it does on its own. But because we have to check a number that the user is submitting, we're going to say num apples, and that's going to be our variable, and that's going to be a number. Now, in strictly typed languages, you'd say that, but this is a JavaScript, so we don't do that here. Um, and we are going to ask if num apples is equal to perfect number, then do this. But if it's not, we need some other stuff. So if it is num, if num apples is greater than perfect number, we want to do something else. And lastly, we have another condition, else if num apples is less than perfect number. We want to do something else. But what happens if they enter something that's not a number? We're just going to have one more condition to say, alert, I don't know what you're talking about. So first, if the number of apples is equal to perfect number, we can alert, yes, you ate the perfect number of apples. If it's not, we can say alert. They ate too many apples in this case, so you ate way too many apples. And if it's not enough apples, you didn't eat enough apples. And so what this is going to do is any time this function is called, it's going to take the number of apples that was submitted to it and check through this if statement we just wrote and say if it's equal to the perfect number great we're gonna reward the user with this statement yes you ate the perfect number of apples if it's if they entered a number that's too big then you ate way too many apples if they entered a number that's too little you didn't eat enough apples and if they enter something that's not even a number or nothing at all we're gonna tell them we don't know what you're talking about so here is what we do with the form and this is pretty simple. So we have, our, we have our simple form here, and everything's already been named. And I even named the text box num apples, which is the same thing here. So this will be really easy to, to keep everything standard. But first, we have to give the form a couple of, of things. First, we want to give it the method of post, because if the difference of post and get is if you post something, it will not show up in the URL, and it will send, um, and it will send the data not privately, but not obviously, um, and git will say, you know, 
num apples equals five and submit equals submit. Um, and so you get all that extra crap in the menu, which you or in the in the go bar, which you do not need. So the method is post, and the name of the form, which this is going to be important, is going to be apples form. And normally, you would put an action that would say, go to this page when the form's done processing. But we do not want to put an action here because we just want to stay on the same page. Instead, we're going to use the onSubmit action, which we'll call some JavaScript. And the JavaScript we want to call, believe it or not, is our function, check apples. And then we want to pass it the number of apples. Now, we can't just say num apples here because it doesn't know where that is coming from. We need to tell it that it's in the form. Now, things get a little bit more complicated here, and we're not going to get into this too much right now. But if you want to find something on your document, uh, use the, you can use the DOM, the document model, um, and say document.form, and that form is going to be apples form, that num apples, which is the text field. But we don't need the actual text field. We need the value of the text field. So we're going to say numapples.value. So we're going to go over here and reload the form. There we are. And I'm going to say, I ate two apples. I could eat two apples. I didn't eat enough. OK, how about if I ate 19? You ate way too many apples. What if I ate 12 apples? Yes. You ate the perfect number of apples. And you can see that our code is causing that to happen. And we've just made a very, very simple guessing game in JavaScript using an HTML form. And so that's basically how functions work. You can use functions to call snippets of code that you've written from different places and have them do different kinds of things. And that makes it possible to really make all sorts of applications because you can have these codes. It's kind of like having a command key. When I press command N to make a new document, that's calling a little function that says create a new document. Um, and that's essentially what you just did here by writing this little number guessing game. Now we can make it a lot more complex and start using all sorts of other things, but let's just pat ourselves on the back right here and say, hey, we made our first really simple application and we've written some code in JavaScript. Good job.